In this lecture, we will discuss variables in Visual Basic. Recall that variables just simply store data while a program is running. So we can de uh, declare a variable, we can store something in there, and then if we need it later on, we can use it. What we've seen so far in our previous applications and examples is after we enter information into a text box and we use that information, we can't access that information again. So we enter something and we can do something with that value, but after we've used it up, we can't use it anymore. So what we want to do, in fact, in most programs and applications, we want to be able to use that information more than once. So this is where variables come into play. So we can take what we've entered in text boxes, store them in variables, and then we can access them whenever we want. Let's take a look at an example of where variables would be very useful for us. So let's suppose we take out a loan. If we want to do that, we need to get some information. Uh, we need to know the amount of the loan. So we're going to let P be that amount. We need to know the period of the loan or the number of years it's going to take to pay back the loan. We're going to let that be N. And then finally, we need to know the interest rate of the loan. So we're going to let that be R. And what we want to do is figure out how much we pay every month in order to pay back the entire loan. So let's say we use a single text box to, to do this calculation. So we would enter the loan amount in here, and then we would enter the period of the loan, and then we would enter the interest rate. Now, the problem is we need all three numbers to calculate the monthly payment. But the problem is with the text boxes, when I enter something and then it gets cleared, that value is gone. So that means we have to make sure that we save each number before we enter the next one. So here we need three variables in order to calculate the monthly payment. Let's look at another example. Uh, let's say we're playing a role-playing game on our computer or an RPG. It could be like a Final Fantasy type or it could be some MMO RPG. Use your imagination. Most RPGs would allow the player to enter a name for the character that he or she is playing. Now let's say we want to communicate with that particular player. You have to know the name of that player. Because if you just type in a name and then you don't do anything with it, it's going to be hard to talk to the person if that name is not available anywhere. So here we have to make sure that we save that name somewhere. So we would have a variable that would store the name. And in fact, the way most games work is they would use that name variable to display text whenever they're talking to that player. So maybe you're going to complete a quest and you see the, the quest text and your name appears on there. Well, it's, the way that works is there's a variable that just prints the information of that name in the actual quest text. We wouldn't be able to do that if we couldn't store the name of the person. So a variable here is required. Now, whenever we have a variable, there is some data type associated with it. So what is a data type? We've seen this in other programming classes, but it doesn't hurt to review. So a data type actually gives us some information. It tells us what kind of values can be stored in a particular variable. And it also tells us what operations we're allowed to perform on a variable. So whenever we have a variable, every single variable has some data type associated with it. So just to give a couple of examples, we can have integers, doubles, strings, and decimals. Now here, uh, double and decimal are completely different. These are data types uh, exclusive, no, I shouldn't say exclusive, but these are the data types for uh, Visual Basic. And decimal is just a little bit different from double. We'll, we'll see how it differs in a little bit. But the idea with this is I have a variable and there's a data type. So that tells me what kind of values I can store in there. So for example, if it's an integer, I can only store integers in that variable. And it also tells me what kind of operations I can perform on it. If I have a, a string variable, for example, I can't subtract two strings. I can concatenate two strings, but I'm not allowed to add or subtract or multiply or divide strings. We'll first take a look at the integer data type. And just like any other programming language, the integers in Visual Basic will store whole numbers. So just to give some examples, we can have one, we can have zero, we can have negative integers, so negative 23 is fine. We can have 234, we can have a wide range of whole number values. 
Now, whenever we create an integer variable in Visual Basic, unlike some programming languages, there is a default value associated with it. Uh, in this case, the default value would be zero. I think Java does it as well. I think we talked before in CS121 that Java uh, integers um, have zeros by default, but other programming languages may not necessarily have a default value. With Visual Basic, the default value is zero. So if you don't initialize a variable, it, you will be given zero by default. Now, the integer data type is not the only data type that can store whole numbers. There are other types as well. We have longs and shorts. We're not going to be using them much if at all, but a long just simply means that we allocate a little bit more memory to store larger ranges of values, whereas a short uh, allocates less memory and we store a smaller range of values. A short was mainly used when the system had, a, had memory constraints, but that's not really the case anymore, so we just use the typical integer. In fact, the integer data type is the most common data type that we would use for whole numbers. The double data type works just like doubles in other programming languages, where we can store floating point numbers. So what this means is we can actually store numbers with decimal places. So to give a couple of examples, we can have 2.34, we can have negative numbers, we can have like negative 23.5, we can have all sorts of numbers that do include decimal places. And just like the integer data type, the default value for a double variable in Visual Basic is zero. Technically it's 0.0, .0 but it's pretty much zero. Now we should mention that just like in other languages, the double data type value is actually stored in scientific notation. So if you remember the way scientific notation works is there's a mantissa, which you can think of as like your initial base part and then the exponent. So scientific notation is usually some number that has um, what as exactly one whole number place, and then you have a bunch of decimal places, then you multiply it by 10 with some power. So the mantissa is that number before multiplying by some power 10, and the exponent is the actual power, uh, the exponent associated with the power of 10. So we store these two values in our memory. We don't store the entire number. So this does let us store larger numbers, but they may be slightly inaccurate just depending on like how large of a number it is and how many how many digits are involved with the number. The string data type just simply stores strings or a sequence of characters that would be surrounded in quotes. So just to give a couple of examples of strings, uh, we could have something like four kids so here we can actually have numbers be part of the string. We can have something like his name is John Cena. Uh, we can even do numerical values as string. So 3.14159 are the first couple of digits of pi. Now the default value for a string is a little different from default values with integers and doubles. The default value is actually nothing. Uh, it's what's called a null reference. It, Kind of similar to null strings it's just it's really not initialized the same thing we want to be actually careful because the null string is not necessarily the same thing as an empty string an empty string actually is a string it's just you have the quotes and nothing between it here we're just saying there's nothing maybe the word null i think but there isn't any quotes part of it so the default value is just nothing or null the decimal data type is actually something very different from other programming languages. In fact, this does not exist in most other languages. It does store floating point numbers, which is pretty much what doubles do. So it's just like a double data type. The difference though is that it actually provides the greatest number of significant digits for a number. So just to give you a the idea to be more specific it actually stores 29 significant digits compare that to a double where it actually stores like i think seven or eight depending on the programming language so that's a big difference between seven or eight and 29 and just like with doubles the default value for this is zero this data type is great if we want to do some calculations that require more accuracy, where we have a large number of digits and we really can't afford to do any rounding. So like doing financial computations would be a really good example of where we would use the decimal data type. 